Essentially, real estate is a necessary evil for these businesses, but it can also contribute to being a great strategic advantage that a business has in the sense that it could serve, the space could serve as a great recruiting tool to hire and retain talent. Uh, it could be a great opportunity to uh, continue to promote your brand. You know, you've got a web presence, but then when people actually physically show up in your space, you want to uh, basically take advantage of that additional opportunity to promote your brand. Well, first of all, what we're seeing is companies are taking advantage of the lower rates that we have right now by signing longer term leases. So the terms of the leases, the options are, are essentially allowing companies to lock in these lower rates. Another thing that we're seeing a lot of is more collaborative space, essentially more open layout, more breakout rooms, more conference rooms. It's about taking the knowledge that the senior executives have and being able to transfer it to those newer associates by being more open and collaborative. Another trend that we're seeing is companies are moving more towards green initiatives and sustainability efforts. And so we're starting to see that becoming part of the branding uh, in a company's space. Well, first of all, you want your business strategy to drive your real estate strategy and not the other way around. So a good real estate strategy starts with a good understanding of where your business is now and where you want your business to be down the road. You don't want to end up paying for more space than you have or, of course, having too little space and having to scramble, uh, possibly adding people in uh, discontiguous spaces throughout the building. So it's important to understand your business strategy. On another angle, you want to understand where your clients are located and if you need to be near them. For example, you know, if you're a law firm, do you need to be near the courts? Uh, a lot of uh, transportation issues are also driving this real estate strategy. Do you need to be near the trains? Do you need to be near uh, the L stations or, or public transportation? So those are a few uh, of the key issues that are driving uh, decisions now. Well, in any negotiation, information is king. And when you bring in a real estate broker, they're going to have a great understanding as to what is reasonable and what is not. For example, we all talk about rental rates and free rent, but there's other things like rights to terminate. You know, most people don't understand that that can be a tremendous piece of leverage uh, for your lease, regardless of whether the market's gone up or down by the time you get there. Um, in addition, there's other things as, you know, securitization. We can talk about uh, letters of credit burning off over time. Uh, and then other rights, uh, what be it growth or contraction rights, are important. And at the end of the day, the landlord's going to pay that tenant rep broker. So the cost is free for a tenant to use. And essentially what you're gaining is an opportunity to level the playing field. You know, every major landlord downtown has brokers representing their best interests, so it would only be reasonable for a tenant who doesn't, you know, their main business is not real estate driven, to have somebody who negotiates lease transactions on a regular basis.